This video is sponsored by Skylo. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new episode. Have you ever struggled getting the colors right in your photos? Maybe it was a twilight and you just can't get it right. You're not sure how to bring out the colors that you were seeing with your eyes in your photos. They may not look a little more dull than in reality. Well, today we're trying a few updates from Luminar Neo that hopefully will help us get over that. We have a few updates like twilight enhancement, water enhancement, we have panorama, we have new masking options. We're gonna review that together through a few photos that I selected that you will see will make you travel while we edit. So grab a cup of coffee, a tea, a hot chocolate. We're doing this together. So let's get started. Okay, welcome. Let's jump right into it. If you've ever tried to do panoramas, you know how difficult it can have to a real nice stitching. Well, recently Luminar Neo made a bunch of updates and I'm gonna share with you in just a second after this how and for whom I think Luminar Neo is a great tool, in which circumstances I would recommend it and not, and last but not least also my usage of it, uh, very simply put. So here you can literally select photos that you've taken as a panorama, for example with your drone, with your phone, with your camera, and simply drop them in that little thing called panorama stitching. And here you can press start and it's gonna do it automatically. No need to go into Photoshop or other softwares or even Lightroom, you can do it directly in this. This is one of the updates that I saw recently that I was like kind of excited about because you can do it like this. It's been improved, it's been uh, made better. You can do it just like this, see, boom, that's it. My panorama is done. And now I have a TIFF file, or if you want, you can use a video. For example, if you film your panorama and drop it right here, and that video is going to be turned into a panorama photo. So it's pretty cool. I haven't tried the video yet. Maybe we'll try in the future soon, but here's your result. You get a .tiff image that you can then edit and work on, and the result is extremely clean. So I would, encourage you to, to try that if you're struggling with panoramas. May not be everyone, but from time to time, I do like to create a beautiful panorama. So now let's jump on to my favorites that I selected for this episode, because there's a new tool, a new update that I saw in the releases that was about twilight enhancement. Twilight is something that is notoriously difficult to edit. Why is it difficult to edit? Because the problem is that you get a lot of colors in the sky. It's kind of dark, as you can see on that side of the frame. When you're trying to mask on the sky, then you have the problems with the trees. I mean, it's a little difficult, I find, to edit. So it's here in the, under the landscape and it's called Twilight Enhancer. But big warning, before you start doing any of these, you need, especially, I mean, if you're working with a raw image, you need to go to your developing modules for the raw image first and start doing changes here that you want to do. Why? Because they will be applied on the raw image. And then on top of that, you'll do the other things that will add layers. So if you want a little smart contrast, I love smart contrast. You see, it actually adds contrast, but in an intelligent way where it's not gonna add contrast everywhere where it doesn't need to be. And it's gonna do it differently on the sky than on the palm tree. So I don't know, I find it really cool. Uh, and then I'm gonna up the shadows a little bit, just so I have an image. A little bit like that. Now, also optics, very important. Fix the optics. I'll show you. Do you want to know why? Look at this. This is why. You see this image? You see the corners? Something's completely off. So you just go to your raw develop module and then you press fix. There we go. That's it. No more problem. We'll edit that photo later. Don't worry. I'll, I'll get to that one. I think this guy is so crazy. Now that we have our few models done, you know, I'm not going to do much more to that image. I'm just going to leave it like that because that's where I find that the power of Luminar Neo is, is in those like tools that would take me a lot of masking to do. So Twilight and the Hanser, let's try it. You have basically different presets of color. We're going to change a little bit the amount here. Now we're gonna improve a little bit. I wanna bump up the exposure also, but look, just focus on the colors, right? It's bringing up that nice tones, even in the water, in the, in, in the sky. I absolutely love that. So now we have to refine that mask. This is a mask problem. Whenever you see that in an image, it's usually a mask problem. So let's just fix that. You move sky global until you find something that 
looks better yeah this looks already better and then you go fix gaps and here you try to find the balance here we go i think we've got something clean here look at this this looks great if you want to know how i took that photo sony a1 1635 24 millimeter iso 500 f28 and 120th of a second so if you go to edit up there that's where you see the edits you've done already so you go back to uh, twilight and answer now we can change a few more things we can make it a little warmer which i want just the sky so this is what is really cool is that it's masking everything like you, you like you would want it but uh, kind of automatically and then it adapts what needs to be warmed up and not. If I disable it, you see the bottom part of the image just doesn't get affected, right? But now it warms up everything in the image. I find that extremely helpful to save time. This is stuff that takes a long time in Photoshop to do. If you've ever tried, you know what I'm talking about. Relight human, if you have a human, you can relight it. Uh, feathering, water reflection, if you want more or less water reflection. It's not like super obvious sometimes I find. Uh, because there's not reflection that per se and then the blur amount is if you want to blur a little bit your masking behind i wouldn't touch it too much honestly you just move it and see how it feels but this looks great for me okay look at this like before after now we have more colors i may actually want to bump it up because it was really pretty on the field and that's it boom before after you know it's subtle but impactful in my opinion. Now press export to the disk. There we go, put it here and replace. Et voila, photo edited. How cool is that? What do you think so far? Is that something that would be helpful for you? We're gonna get to our street photos just after this one because this one, ah, what a beautiful place it was. By the way, you can always add your own presets on stuff and there is my Epic Travel collection which is my collection from um, for like that's really directed towards a vi wide variety of photos like with travels and stuff. But let's go to edit. We're not here to talk about presets. We're here to talk about our develop module. So I'm going to fix my optics right away. Boom. And now add some smart contrast in that image. Ooh, and now look at this. This is looking great, right? I mean, look at these colors of those buildings. We're on a boat. Uh, I was going to help Coral Garners film some stuff. Uh, which is non for profit helping doing coral reef restoration. Dropping down a little bit the shadows here. There we go. This looks great. I have my basic adjustments done. Now, let's go to try the water enhancer, which is a new tool, right? So let's see what it does. Increase the amount. And ooh, as you can see, it's, it's basically making a water Gatorade like, right? We can make it more blue, less blue. Uh, bump the original color instead, you know, more present. And then green. Make it more green. I think I'd probably do that, like a balance of this. But I think the most interesting part is like less the color for me right here. Or maybe it's helpful if you're in Chicago and you want to pretend you're in the Maldives. I don't know. But the brightness, like I would drop it down. And then the contrast, adding a little bit of contrast in my water, I find it is super helpful. Why is it so cool? Because it, it does it kind of intelligently. If you look at those highlights, they are being taken care of differently than the rest of the water. Well, it avoids me doing a mask on just the water. So again, I think it, it just saves a little bit of time here. If you want to make it like super vibey, you can go in the landscape tool and go to foliage. Maybe I would do that. Actually, I don't know because I'm like torn between like killing greens sometimes and not killing them. But now let's say you want to add accent, right? but you actually want to do it only on the buildings, there is something new, which is object selects and mask AI. So object select would analyze the photo and then you would select just the objects that you want. This is highlighting in, in red, just that one building, right? And then it's gonna highlight maybe that one too. So if you want just those two to have enhancement done, you can. We can take the luminosity tool also, if you want to apply it just to the highlights. I mean, luminosity can work for some skies, but not always. Uh, in that case, I don't think it's gonna work exactly how I want it. But if I want to apply the structure just to the lightest part in the area, in the photo, I think that's helpful. Look, there we go. You see, and everything that's dark is not gonna be affected by it now. Anyway, you can play with that. Uh, this is a photo that's a very specific vibe. I, I think when you take a photo like that, and in just two seconds, so you're like, I want to enhance the twilight here. Boom, this looks great. 
uh, we see we have a, oh my god this looks so good because the sky was epic on location now we're gonna fix a little bit the sky you see there was like weird stuff on the edges now it's gone totally looks good now you're like oh no i didn't do my raw edits you can go back here in the edits and go to the raw develop model and noiseless they keep it there you're not gonna see the layers that are on top affected yet so you can do your work here like if you want some contrast uh, you want to bump up maybe the shadows a little bit drop down the highlights maybe that's how i would do it and then fix my image a little bit there we go and now i exit hop i'm back on the photo look at it this was so quick again doing those layers usually takes a lot of time let's go for a street photo right here how are we gonna do this for this one we're gonna honestly we're just gonna grab one of my preset as a uh, first adjustment i think osaka i like osaka here now let's say you want to bump up this guy right i want to make him look a little brighter i'm just gonna go to ai mask instead of having to select an object per se you can do literally let the machine decide human sky architecture man-made ground that's how cool is that it detected all those things and you're like i just want the human and it literally picked up the main subject in my image that's in focus and that's it and now my adjustments are only applied to the person here super helpful i wanted to edit also that photo with you because or at least show you something i don't know if you knew about that tool already let me know in the comments right now did you know you can actually pretend you shot an image at f8 with luminar neo it's super cool it's called magic light ai and look it's gonna take all the light sources and it's gonna apply stars on them right and then it's up to you to adjust like how bright you want them how much they're supposed to glow less or more how, how clear it's gonna be around the brightness for this type of photo it's awesome because then it allows you on the field to shoot at f18 f28 uh, keep things very natural you, look you can even make it look like there's only one beam and then you make them look super big you see and and honestly what what it does is in my opinion saves you time on the field if you want to shoot at a at an aperture that allows you to not bump up your iso and still get a, an interesting feel afterward in your images now i discovered also that they had gen erase and gen swap and gen expand which is super interesting because it allows you to uh, simply erase an object and have it uh how do you call that ai erased so let's see how it works let's say i want to remove that that guy in the background how would that work i do it sometimes for street photos but sometimes i don't i i think what's important to know is if it's documentary then you don't touch anything if it's just your own interpretation artistic look you do it look this guy just disappeared how does it look in the background looks kind of clean uh there's something weird with the car maybe where the car is double but you can readjust or like uh reset the selection and do it again if you want but what i find interesting is that you can also do that and have it a swap so what's the swap Z let's say you take that guy again and you're like uh bunny rabbit instead you want a bunny rabbit instead of a human and then it's supposed to do it for you also I don't know when exactly you would use a bunny rabbit, but let's say uh, you wanted to swap something in an image, it, it doesn't look good, there is a barrier and you're like, I don't want to remove just the barrier, maybe I want to change it. Hey, look at that, even the shadow, the direction of the shadow is, is good on the bunny rabbit. It's, it's kind of funny, I mean, who would do that? But why not? Why not? You're making Eastern rabbits. Okay, I just wanted to show you it's possible. And then the last one that a lot of you may know from Photoshop, Gen Expand is let's say you want to expand an image you want to change the ratio and you're missing or you you frame tight a little bit maybe it's the sky maybe it's the building well gen expand can help you try to create something and honestly the easier the image the better it works here the image is pretty complex so let's see how it goes yeah you see it's not bad but it's not great this looks like the building has been destroyed now if we did that with an, an image that is a lot easier let's say I, I take this image and i actually want to expand it a little bit because i'm like ah, you know what i framed a little tight uh i want to make it vertical so i'm gonna expand at the top and that way i can reframe it vertically 
without compromising. And now it's something that's going to be a lot easier, in my opinion, for the software to read. You always have to kind of understand the, the busier it is in an image, the more difficult it is for softwares to, to process things, right? Now this looks great, super easy, looks clean. Uh, clearly you can, you can't really tell what, what happened, you know, and now you have an image in a different ratio. So I wanted to show you those tools also that are fairly new that I think really makes uh, Neo a great option for a lot of people. All right, last photo, I promise we would edit that one. I'm actually excited to see it edited. So develop raw, we already added some things here. I'm gonna drop down the exposure because I think I shot it too, too bright and add some contrast. Uh, bump up the highlights and drop the shadows. I actually want more the silhouettes than anything. By the way, if you think there is noise, don't forget you have a noiseless tool here also that you can use to remove noise in the image. Now, if we go in Twilight Enhance, look at this. Oh, colors are popping like crazy. It's incredible. Here we still have the weird thing happening. So let's move a little bit of sky, change the sky global and fix gaps, maybe reduce it. There we go. Now, look at this, the water reflection here is present, so we can bump it up. I think the sky temperature is good. Oh, no, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. And this photo was is a DNG. Then the dawn, you see more or less. And I think I want to increase the size to make it even brighter. There we go. And then we can bump the exposure a little more. And honestly, this was like that on the field. And we can try the water enhancer also. Here, we're gonna kill the blues. Just keep the original color. And what we're gonna play is the brightness just to bump it up. And that's it. I mean, I, I don't think I would do too much more to this image uh, because it's just so epic and it was so epic. But you see from the raw to this one, that's just so impressive how, how it came out. Let me know what you think of those updates. I find that they're very helpful. I can see how it's gonna help me save a lot of time. And again, I recommend this software for anyone who doesn't want to go into a uh, big software like Lightroom Capture One. This can do everything. And if you love to edit photos in the intuitive way and an easy to use software. Honestly, Luminar has always been great. I literally recommend it to a lot of friends and people in the course that ask me which one should I use right now. I'm only shooting a few photos and I'm not doing it professionally. I'm like use Luminar Neo. And if you're doing it professionally and you're doing like art and you spend a lot of time on Photoshop, try it because you may be really surprised by how fast you can get to similar results and tweak things just in uh, Luminar without having to go and, and create so many layers. So try it out. There's a link in the description. And if you want to learn to master your autofocus, watch this video. If you want to learn about your light metering, watch this one. And I will see you in the next episode. Remember, try something different, try something new. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.